welcome to the final video in my series on how to build a pure x racing uh, quadcopter drone racing drone racing drone keyword keyword racing drone <laughs> uh, so at this point uh, I've given you the detailed videos in the last couple parts on how to put together all the electronics and as I said in the opening the electronics are really the hard part once you've got this little electronic pod all ready to go it actually the rest of the assembly is pretty easy and in fact I switched that pod over to the QQ190 just on principle. I just, uh, you know, unscrewed the motors, unscrewed the standoffs off the bottom, lifted the whole thing off, whoop, right on here, no problem. And it is really pretty easy on these copters to lift off the camera pod, disconnect the camera and the video transmitter, the camera pod comes off, and, and you're good to go. And that is true if, of course, you have attached the video transmitter to the underside of the camera pod. So, uh, so I'm not going to do a detailed build on the remainder of the copter, which is pretty much the camera pod. And the real reason for that is that between making all the other videos on my channel and working on this one, which this one required a lot of editing, uh, hours of video shot and then edited down with separate voiceover to make it make sense. I was getting kind of sick of this build and I just wanted to finish the dang copter and go fly it. And so I just said, forget it. And I stopped recording and I just finished building the camera pod and put it together. Cause I really felt like by the time you get the electronics done, the hard part is done. So uh, I think that anybody who has tackled this monstrosity is more than capable of putting together the freaking camera pod and uh and finishing the build and then of course there's the topic of configuration and tuning which is a whole separate topic we're not going into so what i do want to do here though is i want to show you the final product because there were some changes that occurred between the time when i shot the initial build videos and now and i just want to take you through some final thoughts on you know uh, tips on what how i think this should be built and things to do right and things not to do as you can see here with the escs i have stopped using that silicone tape. For those of you who saw my first video and bought it, um, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I hope you find another use for it uh, in around your home. Uh, actually, by the time I had posted, I only just made that decision really relatively late in this process, and it was kind of too late to go back and change the videos. If you watch part three, you'll see that I mentioned it, but part three came out kind of far after parts one and two. So anyway, you've got a roll of silicone tape, but I don't think it's great for this. It's kind of heavy. It's kind of thick. It, once it gets nicked, it kind of splits. It's not like electrical tape where it gets nicked, it gets a little hole and it just sort of holds. I just didn't think it was great for much. I'd rather just use like electrical tape in this case. And you can see I've got some uh, foam under there. And that's my go-to when I don't have the right size heat shrink. I prefer to heat shrink ESCs. It looks nicer and I think it's better, but uh, I don't have the right size heat shrink. And also because I use the silicone tape, I would have had to desolder the motors and uh, I don't know, I just didn't feel like doing that. So just a little bit of foam tape underneath to prevent any electrical conduct contact between the ESC and the arm and electrical tape over the top and you're good to go. Installing the video transmitter was a bit of a challenge. Now the way that I thought I was going to install the video transmitter was vertical here, just sticking straight up here. And if you take a look, I have done that here with the QQ190. Um, but the Mixuko is not made to work that way. And this uh, opening for the bulkhead connector of the SMA is actually over the board here. So you, you simply cannot have a board. It would, it would hit the flight controller. It's just not going to work. Now, as I said in part two of the series, the Mixuko frame is made for a video transmitter that has a right angle SMA connector on it. So the video transmitter slides in like this and the SMA sticks up. Uh, there are several examples out there. I think the, uh, the FPV Ninja is one that was recommended to me by somebody. Since I fly pretty much exclusively with the, with the TS-5823, uh, I, and I have a bunch of them on hand. I didn't want to go buy a dedicated one. I just took a, a pigtail with a right angle on the end and I soldered the pigtail to the video transmitter uh, as is described elsewhere on the video. I just cut it really short and soldered it on there and it seems to be working fine. If it ever breaks, it's going to be a little bit of a pain to replace it. It's not going to be a drop-in replacement, but then pretty much nothing is a drop-in replacement on a build like this. I've got the antennas very short. 
uh, and I do like to keep my antennas pretty short. Keeping the antennas short like this may reduce range slightly, but ultimately we're not really going for range with an FPV racing quadcopter. We should get plenty of range and it helps keep the antennas out of the props, which is a problem. One of the things I don't like about this frame, well, I have mixed feelings. Let's say I have mixed feelings about this, is that the camera plate is not very well secured and you can see it's very easy to move, right? So a camera will not hold an angle in a crash. It, it holds it okay, but I'm worried that it'll move and, and having the camera angle consistent definitely does help you fly the copter more confidently. If the camera angle changes, you can make mistakes, like you can raise the throttle and expect the copter to climb, and instead the copter just goes into the ground. You could be trying to go over a tree and you pitch back to try and climb up over the tree, but you're not really pitched back as far as you think you are, and so you fly into the tree. These are things that have happened to me while flying the Mixuco because it doesn't have a consistent camera angle, okay? That being said, the lack of a consistent camera angle does, well, number one, it's helping me practice flying at different camera angles and adjust more quickly to the different camera angle. So that's nice, I guess. And I have had some scenarios where, for example, I was doing all out speed runs. And so I pushed the camera to a much more up tilt and could do some straight runs, just drag racing. And then when I get, went to do some acro flight, I changed the angle to something a little less, and we were doing a, a, a multi-GP course, and it was very tight, so I wanted to leave in less angle than that. So it's really easy while you're flying just to go, I need a little less camera angle, whoop, and change it. It's no big deal. Just to, And it does hold reasonably well in flight, and even after crashes, it doesn't move that as much as it seemed like it was going to from how loose it was. Now I did, and a friend of mine suggested this to me, uh, so, so kudos to him. He said, I've heard some people will just take a zip tie and put it on these little horns. And that's actually a pretty good idea. And it does add just a little more tension here, uh, to the front of the, uh, of the, of the camera plate. It still wiggles a little, but it, it does add a little more tension. And every other way I can think of, I pretty much just followed the build instructions and I don't think I have anything to add. The foam tack here, I was suspicious about the foam tack glue that, that Andy Shen suggests. But it is, it's way, it's like rubber cement, but on steroids. It glues so, like it says it's permanent, and I kind of believe it. It is on there real good, and that camera is not going anywhere. I expressed some skepticism in an earlier video about gluing the camera to the plate, but I am no longer skeptical. That is really solid and really strong. Foam tack, check it out if you are not familiar with it. It's like rubber cement on steroids. The other thing I do want to say about this type of build is that if you have an infrared emitter or sensor for a lap timing system, I had a really hard time finding a good place to mount it. Now you might think you could mount it on top of any one of these standoffs, but ultimately that gets it really close to the props and the props were blocking the infrared on in many situations. I had a hard time finding a good place to mount it. I can only imagine if you were flying something like the SP Racing with the built-in emitter, the, the, the LEDs would be right here and they'd basically be dead in line with the props and would get shadowed. Seems like they get shadowed an awful lot. So if you're gonna be doing any kind of lap timing system, I think you're gonna have your work cut out for you getting the infrared uh, transponder to work correctly. Some people have commented on the flight characteristics of one of these Pure X frames. In fact, one of the commenters said that they knew of a prominent pilot who said that these fly like garbage were their exact words. Uh, and, you know, I don't know. I think it flies really nicely. Um, it is It is very light, so it really makes the most of its thrust. I have these exact same motors, props, and ESCs on my QAV and with this one when I do a full throttle punch and then cut the throttle and look down I'm still going up for a good ways whereas on my QAV I don't get as much hang time and vertical float when I do a big punch out I'm, I'm sort of already coming down by the time I've flipped over and looked down so for those of you who are looking for great hang time and going how do folks like uh, Final Glide or Schizo get such crazy hang time one way they might get hang time is just more power to weight more power, less weight, and in this case, we have less weight is what I'm talking about, means that you will go up faster and carry more velocity uh, vertically when you do the punch outs. That being said, I also am not sure I've noticed any like amazing flight handling characteristics. It is a really fun copter to fly, 
but I'm not sure how much of that is just because it's so light, right? I'm not sure if I built an alien with a similar weight to this, would it, would it handle similarly? Uh, this one certainly has a lower aerodynamic profile, and so we'll have less drag. But regardless, uh, I don't know what this guy was talking about, this who, this hypothetical guy was talking about when he said this kind of copter flies bad. Uh, and maybe it flies different, maybe it just didn't agree with him. Uh, if you watch at races, I think you'll see that a lot of the winners are flying these frames. Now maybe that's because these frames are better, or maybe it's just a fad, but I think it's definitely worth building one and finding out for yourself what you think. Now, like I said before, uh, it, this will definitely challenge your building abilities. It will make you a better builder. And if you don't end up liking it, you can always sell it to somebody who will. <laughs> and that's going to do it for this build series. Uh, I will be referring back to this build series, hopefully for future builds, because at the end of the day, the process of building this electronics package is kind of the same, no matter what you're building, whether it's a Mitsuko, a Krieger, a Mitsuko, or the next build that I plan to present, this here QQ190 because I really like this frame. I think the QQ guys are onto something with this frame and I am really looking forward to getting some uh, some good motors on here and really putting this frame through its paces. Uh, but that will be a build for another day, a video for another day. And in the meantime, happy flying.